Okay, we're live. Hey. All right, everybody. Welcome to our fourth Eagle Talk. Uh, today we are definitely going to be stretching it with this topic. The topic for today is maintaining sanity. And if you did not know, today we're definitely making that work. We have been trying and trying to log in and we're having issues streaming. And so we definitely, definitely were having issues with trying to keep it together just so that we can get this program started. So it just seems extremely appropriate today. Yeah. That, that is a topic. Definitely um, putting sanity to the test today, trying to go live. So. Yes. Um, and so with that, I just want to introduce everybody in our Eagle Talk today. Uh, first, we have Bruce Van Vassbinder from our marketing department. Keeping He keeps my sanity most of the time. I, I don't know about that. Sometimes, I don't know. We keep it. Uh, we try anyway, hard. Um, and then our expert uh, today is Dr. Mahone Lewis. Lewis. Uh, she is the director of Seep Sark, and I'm going to have her tell you what that stands for, because that's a really big acronym. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, first of all, I'd like to say, wow, talk about maintaining your sanity. I was like sitting here being uh, sort of frozen because I didn't know what was supposed to be going on and what wasn't because we were blinking for a while and I wasn't sure if you guys out there could see me sitting here blinking but uh, it's something that I hadn't experienced before but it's something that's a part of becoming overwhelmed and all of this is new for me and I was feeling starting to feel overwhelmed and you guys, when you, before you become depressed, before you become anxious, you start becoming overwhelmed. Now, we are the Student and Employee Assistance Program and Substance Abuse Resource Center. Uh, that means that both the students and the uh, staff are able to come for counseling as and address different issues that are going on with them. Issues such as being overwhelmed, issues such as feeling depressed and sad and uh, uh, relationship issues, feeling lonely, feeling uh, like I'm not uh, meeting my own expectations, especially for you, young, you guys that are leaving home for the first time and going to school, or persons who were in the military getting out and deciding to go to school, or persons who were still in the military going to school. It's like one more thing that has been added to your plate, and, and it is not easily digestible, but it can be done. We address these issues in, in individual counseling, we address issues with, in group counseling. Group counseling for things like um, uh, uh, transitions, uh, re uh, relationships, uh, addiction. We have uh, meetings individually as well as in groups for alcohol and drugs, uh, sexual addiction gambling addiction. So there's not anything that's going on out in the universe that we're not addressing when we uh, work with you individually or in groups. We also have, uh, we're, we have referrals. We have instructors who maybe are having some difficult uh, uh, students or students who are having difficulties and one of the uh, sure ways of knowing something is going on is when students are having trouble with their classes. You know, if you're really stressed out, someone can explain to you something over and over and over again, and you're like, I've got it. 
and then five seconds later, you don't have it. So these are things that we address in the SEAP of, uh, of our Student and Employee Assistance Program slash SARC. SARC looking specifically at the substance abuse issues. We refer people as well because uh, substance abuse or addiction, we should say, is something that is very, is complicated. It really is complicated. You jump from one thing to the other. You may be drink, uh, uh, drinking or what some people may term as an alcoholic. And then you get that somewhat under control and then you switch to a sexual addiction. And then you try to get that under control and you switch to gambling. So addiction itself, is something that does just doesn't just go away. And guess what? We all tell tales about it. We lie about it. We don't want anyone to know. And we think that if someone knows that we've got something like this going on, then they might think we are crazy. I don't want to talk about the fact that I'm so sad, so overwhelmed that I want to just do away with myself, but I'm not going to tell anybody because if I tell somebody that I'm that I'm just so tired that I want to die, then they'll think I'm crazy. And so I don't want anybody to know about that. So I'll just continue to hurt myself until the pain becomes so bad that I really do something about it. And it's not always positive what I do. And I know that we've, uh, you and I have worked together on a lot with to help a lot of students and even I've had faculty and staff just because of my job title as director of student life. I work with a lot of students and I've actually in contact with a lot of faculty and staff and they'll, for whatever reason, mention that they're going through a hard time. And I say, well, you guys need to be aware of that. This is a resource that we have. You can go talk to them. And they can help you out. And even if the, if you don't feel comfortable with them full time, but you might be able to get a referral or you might be able to at least start a process towards healing. Um, and nowadays, a lot of people are don't have money and, and this is a resource that's free for students and yes. stuff. And I don't think a lot of people understand that um, or know about it, that it's something that you don't really have to pay out of pocket, especially if you're going through a hard time. Um, and also the other thing that I find personally, um, is the, the transition part of it is really, really key because transition can be almost anything really. Um, it could be going from high school to college. It could be moving from one place to another. It could be just from one class to another, one professor to another. And I find that most of the referrals that I make have to do with what some version of transition. And I don't know if maybe you can kind of talk a little bit and expound a little bit about your experience with transit, just transition even, um, and, and what that can look like, uh, for somebody that might need help. One of the things, uh, with transition, I'll start with the the younger group when you're leaving high school going to college for the first time and in high school you could uh, you were a part of this group and that group and you were still able to keep your grades up so you were making a's and b's without any effort or very little effort you go to college and you expect well that same thing is going to happen so your expectations for yourself are set pretty high. That first semester that you're in school, if you become overwhelmed, you're like you've got class, you've got classes that you have to go to. Your instructor is not saying every day, uh, Susie Q, make sure you're reading. Susie Q, be sure to do this. And uh, so you have to set up your own plan of action, your own guideline, and sometimes 
if you're on your own, you don't think of this until near the mid part of the semester when things all of a sudden start in, encroaching on the other activities that you've had. And you may take your first exam, your midterm exam, and you don't score the way you normally would. And it's a shock. It's a shock and you start doubting yourself. You just always assume that you, you've coped up to that point and you just always assume that that's the way it was gonna be forever. That's one transition that's happening that you are having more control and you're in charge of how you study, when you study, making it to class, and getting that grade. It's not gonna just come. The other thing that happens is that we have the uh, military persons who are, are get out of the military and they uh, come to school for the first time. And I really like the fact that we do have different uh, sections of the school where the, those persons who are prior military can go and get information. Uh, we, they are not always, when they first come, they have trouble like filling out all the different paperwork. Should I do this? Should I do, because they had, they were under a different system. And in the military, there were things that you didn't have to do, or you just needed to, uh, or it was just done and you didn't even think about it. Well, that has now been added to what you're doing when you go to school. You have to take control and uh, fill up, do that paperwork. So anyway, you have, it becomes something, it, it can agitate you. You become upset, you become angry, and then you uh, don't always follow through with what you need to do or you have to go and be around other people and letting them know you don't know. And that's also an ego thing going on because uh, that you have to, to deal with. Some of the transitions are people who are moving from uh, relationship uh, situations. And um, sometimes that means uh, divorce. Sometimes that means marriage. If you've been single all your life and had a lot of time to do what you wanted to do, and then suddenly you're married, and then you're trying to go to school too, then you're, you're having to try to put, synthesize all of this, and it doesn't just come that easily. And you don't want to tell anybody about it because maybe that implies that you're not as smart as you thought you were, or that you have something going on uh, that's uh, different than anybody else. Um, we have also persons who, the divorce, you really are, there's a grieving going on there because you have separated from a situation that you were in, even if it was the very best thing for you that you separated, but still it's different. And you have to learn and adjust to that difference. And then we have people who's, uh, who had a, a loss. When I said grieving a moment ago, we think in terms of a death. And we do have situations where you are trying to go to school and you have, there's been a death in the family. So you're having, your transition is, how do I deal with these emotions? How am I able to take the time necessary to help those who are around me who are also grieving and then also take the time to go ahead and study and do my work? And am I being selfish? So there's just so much going on when it comes to transition. And uh, if you go into school for the first time, if you're going to the dorm for the first time and you were trying to make uh, friends, sometimes you go and you talk too much. You tell everything that if you've ever done, good, bad, and ugly. And then a week or two later, you realize that this is not really who you want to be your best friend. And then you're, you've got information that's off, out there for the universe to, to uh, hear or know. And then you still, then again, you start feeling badly and you beat yourself up. 
in transition groups and in transition counseling, we help you analyze where you are, look at where you want to go, and we're supportive of your getting and achieving those goals. I know that for me, for example, um, I have had uh, student workers that have worked for me and they basically know that they're fa- like in, in the one instance that I'm thinking about, she knew her father was about to die. Um, it was imminent. It was just something that it was expected. And I know I asked her to go see you because I knew that at that point she was in a position to be able to um, still speak with some level of cohesiveness. Um, I don't know if that's the right word, but I knew that she could still maintain a conversation in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Um, And I told her, you know, it's, if you know, it's going to happen, you're going to need support afterwards and you might be able to speak now to a counselor. Um, And it doesn't mean that you, yes, you probably need help right now, but you're probably going to need more help once it happens. And you want to already develop a rapport with somebody so it's easier so that you don't have to explain everything after it happens. Because I always think that that would be harder. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think she ended up doing that. Um, And I sent her a message and said, hey, just let me know. You know, we know it's how it may happen at any moment. Just send me a message and just tell me that it hit the fan and that's all you need to do. And. Sure enough, a few weeks later, I got the message. It hit the fan and, um, and she was appreciative at least of having that as an option with, uh, with you guys as an advisor, just to kind of get our uh, counselor being able to kind of have that, uh, in, I do have a comment or a question in the chat. In Facebook from our top fan, Julie says, um, if we talk to a student or friend who's experiencing loneliness and isolation. As a result of the pandemic, what suggestions can we make to help them feel more connected? Well, partly, I would say that things are things are changing somewhat now. My, I believe that it's it's helpful for that person to be able to get out of the house, get out of the apartment go to a park, go and and uh, do all of the uh, things that has been suggested in terms of your staying uh, careful and safe. Exercise is something that the person can do, but they've probably been doing a lot. Of, I guess everybody or all these people since we've been uh, closed in for so long. If if we all had been exercising, we ought to be really six packs, nineteen packs, whatever. <laughs> we should be really looking good. Um, I think the it's letting that person know that you care about them. If they if and that you're concerned. If you've noticed that it seems that they are maybe lower than they've been. Um, that they are maybe isolating somewhat, not trying to get out, uh, not trying to reach out to others, uh, then help them because their uh, their stress level <clears throat> has increased and they're having trouble just managing. But the fact that uh, they know that they're not forgotten that you are thinking about them if no one else is, and that you, uh, and if there's anything that you could do to help them, that you want to do it. And that not only will help them, but it'll help you as well, because it's keeping you busy. And if you're not thinking about yourself, and with that, with your reaching out to the other person, they're not totally just focused on themselves and what they used to do. And remember, when we think about our past, we have a tendency to forget all those things that made us sick as whatever during all of the time. We think we have a tendency to glorify uh, those times that we had. Oh, it was so great. I was at the beach and the whole group was doing this. and, and, And it really 
we, when we say it over in our head, it sounds really great. But then if you really thought about it, or if you wrote it down and went and looked in your journal, it may have uh, had a different picture. It present a different picture than what we're imagining at this point. But I do think it's really good that you are thinking about this person and, uh, and just let them know that you are. And that even is so for persons who are so depressed that they're thinking about suicide. Uh, the, it's important you don't go to the person and let them know, I'm concerned about you. I've noticed that you don't, you're not on the social media anymore or you're not doing this anymore. And, uh, and I would want you to know also that you say, I don't want to bring it up because if I bring that up, then they're going to start thinking about it, then they're going to do it. And that's not true. What is true is that if you bring it up, it allows that person an opportunity to say, okay, and to talk about it. That takes away a little bit of their stress, knowing that they have someone that they can talk to that's a friend who's not thinking they're crazy and that they will, that they want to help them. So, and that's another thing about our program. Uh, we are available to persons who are feeling low and uh, we will do all we can to assist you through counseling, uh, to through referral uh, and, and things like that. And we also have uh, resources where we, if you're having financial issues, food issues, we can refer you places as well. So. I have here Cruz uh, Zina says Texans Recovering Together provides a virtual crisis counseling support program. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, Dr. Mahone, but um, that's, I guess, an option that is being sent out there. Um, thank you for kind of sharing. Resources are good. Um, that's good. Please send a, a, an email because I'm not familiar with the the Texans, you said Texans working. Texas recovering together. Um, I guess uh, Cruz is sending out quite a few things here and um, I'll probably end up kind of putting them together and sending them to you. Um, Thank you. I would like that. I, we keep a uh, resource manual. I don't know if you can, if you can see this. Everybody can see that. And, uh, in this manual, we list uh, many things that are happening that are in the Central Texas area. So, uh, and we try for those persons who are like, uh, and staff who are, who don't want it, things, their business in the clean, to stay in the clean area or Carpus Cove area, we have things that are, uh, Georgetown and uh, Austin, Waco, so that you can we can refer you other places to get assistance to. So, um, Cruz Zena says she tried to take a or he I'm not sure tried to take a photo of the flyer. I have it, but it won't allow me. I will send it. Thank you. I'm going to post in a minute, um, Dr. Mahone's. Uh, email. So if you I, could please send that to her, that would be great. I just uh, posted that in WebEx. So if anybody's watching on WebEx, it's no, out there. I'll, 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 I'll take it from there. Um, yeah, because that's definitely our, um, that's, that's one of the best ways for her. And, and that's the other thing, you know, we're always constantly trying to make sure that we get the most up to date information. Um, with these programs, um, wait, I did something that I wasn't supposed to. I posted Shame. something I wasn't supposed to. Uh, While we're waiting for that, Dr. Mahone Lewis, uh, you mentioned reaching out to someone who's not, who's feeling a little lonely or whatever. What about that person that is feeling lonely and they really don't have anyone to reach out to? Let's say, for example. They're not comfortable talking to their family or they're kind of estranged from their family a little bit and they really don't feel like they have a friend to talk to or a close friend that they can 
you know, share things with or, or, or connect with. So do you have any advice for somebody that's, that's really, who just feels alone? Well, we do have, uh, well, one thing I wanted to say is that we are have uh, counseling virtually as well as in, in person. Right now we have um, staff on campus on uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday morning. And you're able to go to and set up appointments to have counseling on campus. I, I counsel virtually and you're able to reach me by the, my number there on campus and through email. And I talk to students and staff virtually through Doxy Me. Uh, that's one thing that you can do. You can call and uh, if you, if I'm talking with you, certainly you don't even you don't even have to move from wherever it is that you are, uh, and we can uh, address whatever issues you have. Everything that you say to us is confidential, confidential and free. Those are major major things that you don't usually get free. And talking to just anybody doesn't hold your confidentiality. Mm -hmm. We um, so I would say to you to come to reach out in that manner. Some of you have uh, had experiences with uh, different groups, like uh, maybe it's a church group, maybe it's some kind of a social group, and these things are starting to open up again. Uh, and if you use the care that we've been told, wear your mask, distance, uh, sanitize your hands, wash your hands, do, do things like that, then you may attend different events that are not crowded in. But you have to think through, think it through. What kind of health do you have? Do you have a health issue or not? Uh, well, certainly, I would say getting in touch with us virtually for counseling would be one of the major things. Right. Yeah, I just put uh, in the WebEx chat for those um, who would like to contact uh, you guys about any group or individual counseling, uh, the phone number 254-501-3097. So again, if there's anyone who is looking for counseling, whether in a group session or individual, you can set up an appointment by calling 254-501-3097. Uh, the to get my number, my number is uh 254-526-1166. Right. And I've already posted that. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Definitely wanted to include that for sure. And I, I posted your email in there as well. So, okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you very so, much. I got I, one more question. Um, not don't name names or anything like that, but what is 1 of the most common issues that students come to you with? If 1 student or a couple of students come to you with it, you can bet there are many others out there who are just not able to bring it up to you or come to you or seek the help. But what is one or two of the main issues that you you hear from students that they're having problems with. I'm glad you said two, because I thought of two things at the same. Uh, one is uh, number one, uh, relationships issues. We have uh, those trying to get into relationships and not knowing how those who are breaking up uh, domestic violence situations where they're uh, just have other issues going, anger issues. And so in a relationship, it winds up turning, going sour or south, as you might say. So that's one. The second that we're having more and more, and that is when the person is having doubts about who they are. You know, am I... Oh, uh, 
you know, do I, am I uh, the LG? I don't have all the uh, LGBTQ plus. Yes. LGBTQ and questioning. Plus. There is, remember the questioning. And usually uh, the individuals who are questioning uh, will come and just be kind of lost in a way. I love the fact that uh, I've been around for a few years and things have changed so much. And it's so good when someone is able to come uh, and address this issue without having to wait in counseling for a year or more feeling like I can't talk about this because, but it's out there, it's up front, it's happening. And there are people who deny certain things, but the reality is if you're hurting, you want, you want to help yourself, then let's talk about it. Let's see how we can address this. How can we plan and help you move forward? And that's, those are two of the uh, main things that we hear from, uh, I have heard, I'm hearing from some of the people who come through. And those in the LGBTQ plus community, if you are struggling with uh, um, identity or coming out or whatever, you can contact uh, Dr. Mahone Lewis and her staff at 254-501-3097 as well. And everything is confidential. They will help you through and get you the, uh, the courage that you need to do what you need to do. But you know, one thing is really encouraging to me is when I walk around campus before, I would see more and more uh, of the LGBTQ community um, being visible, either wearing t-shirts or, or holding hands or whatever. And I thought, you know, years ago when I was in school, not, <laughs> not gonna happen. But nowadays, I'm glad to see that more people are more confident, they feel more secure, they feel safe. And they're, yeah. and I hate that word accepted because that's just so, man. But, you know, because it, it's something that, it, it's what it is. And so, and I just like the fact that people are more confident in themselves to be themselves. Well, Bruce, I'm, a, I'm at least 30 minutes older than you. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> and when I, and uh, as I was coming up, they, there was this denial. There is no such thing. Sure. And that is more hurtful than what is the, than now. And so I'm happy to work with anyone with whatever it is that you, if you have a question, Let's look at it. Let, let's deal with it. If you don't have a question and you're just plain happy and you want to shout about being happy that you have found somebody, I want to talk about it with you. I don't want us to go back 30 minutes ago and be unable to even admit something exists. Right. Good point. So again, uh, one more time with the phone number, just in case somebody wants to contact you for counseling, that's 254-501-3097 or 254-526-1166. So I guess um, if you had to give somebody who was just going through something very rough, that would be my last question, I think. Something really, really difficult that's going on in their lives. They can't handle it. Um, they're feeling very lost and confused, angry, all these emotions, and they don't know how to deal with them. You know, what would be maybe some advice that you might be able to give somebody um, that's in that predicament at that time? I'd say, well, I'd say come to us and we would be happy to work with you. But sometimes you have a, you take a step before you actually go to someone who is a professional in doing things. I would say, if you have a friend, get on the phone, talk to them, talk out. Sometimes just getting it out of your mouth helps. Right, make a, get a journal. Uh, you don't have to have, well, I'm broke and I can't do this. And well, you can get a piece of paper. How about the back of some mail or anything? And you can just write out some of it, get it out of you. That's the thing about it. 
it's like uh, regurgitating some of that stuff because if you hold it inside, it does not do you any good at all. And but if you if you write about it, if you get on the computer, they have these little uh, secret places supposedly that can't get that no one can get to, and it's confidential. I'm old school, so I don't know about that. I will go to something where I can, but to write it and and date what you're writing, because I've been upset on a Monday thinking that life is not going to, I can't deal with life and I'm tired of this and this person, no one knows me and nobody likes me. And then keep writing. And then I'll go back a week later and I'm laughing. I'm saying, did I say that? Is that how I felt? And yeah, it was how you, how you felt in the past tense. But things change. You don't, we don't just hold on to those uh, situations. Even a person who is planning suicide, they're not totally, they're, they have thoughts of, but what if? And you want to capitalize on those times where you're looking at the what if. And, uh, but S-E-A-P-S-A-R-C by CTC is out there for you and we are free. And my Woo! suggestion is come on down. <laughs> we can talk about it. That's awesome. That is really awesome. I, I think that there is plenty of people uh, that are right now, there are plenty of people that are going through something similar. Um, and they may not be, a, again, aware of what the options are. Um, or even know what basic steps to take. So I really do appreciate you uh, kind of giving us some of that insight. Um, hopefully people won't need it, but if they do, at least we got, you know, we want to give you guys something to think about and, and to kind of start you rolling. Because um, everybody's going through something and, and yes. you know, sometimes people feel like they're in their own little silo, their own little corner, and nobody else understands, but there if you if you look sometimes not even that hard you can actually find that the, that there's people going through the same exact same thing at the time at the same time with you um and and if you can share on that experience sometimes that can be really helpful too and um that's where some of those services that you mentioned might be really great like even the group counseling or individual counseling um or if you don't feel comfortable necessarily doing it at CTC, maybe getting a good referral um, of services to somewhere else. Those are things that um, are realistic that can be really helpful um, if people want to take advantage of that. So yep. thank you. And that's one good thing is if you don't feel comfortable here at CTC and you're afraid that somebody will find out why at the school that you're going to, Dr. Mahone Lewis and her staff definitely have some excellent referrals off campus that might be of use to you. So don't discount the SEAP just because they're here on campus and you feel uh, unsure or uncertain about using a campus facility or, or a service. They have referrals that can, that can certainly help you in many ways off campus. So please don't discount them. They are there for you. And I can say for sure, I've worked with Dr. Mahone um, individually as I've gone to her in crisis going, oh my God, I need help. <laughs> I, I, I need somebody just to be my sounding board because um, I I'll say it. I've done that um, and I've also referred other people and say, you know, hey, go to her and start your process. Um, but even the people that I've referred, um, I, I don't really ever hear back from Dr. Mahone, except if it's something like where I, um, it's like, yes they've received their services and that's it, <laughs> you know, and that's pretty much all I get back. And I don't really understand, you know, I don't go into details and she doesn't go into details as to what's going on. It's more about, uh, yes, I have been contacted and that's all I hear pretty much. So please uh, be aware uh, that as many referrals as I have sent her way just because of my job, um, that does not mean I get to hear what is 
uh, talked about or discussed that confidentiality really, really does uh, is true and um, and she's very professional in that sense. And that's why I have in, in crisis gone to her myself and said, hey, I just need to get it out. <laughs> I need to get something out of my system and I need a, a safe space to do it. And so um, that's part of the way, the reason why I do recommend uh, going to her uh, or anybody on her staff really. So thank you, Dr. Mahone. If you don't mind, Dr. Mahone Lewis, can I share my my computer screen with uh, with your web page and just kind of scroll down and show some of the services that you offer or, or yes. the areas that you touch upon? Would that be all yes. right? That would be let, great. Let me uh, let me get that pulled up here real quick. And uh, as everybody can see, this is the uh, mental health resources page. And uh, again, there's on this side over here. There's different explanations of what each service is, uh, contact information, a 24-hour crisis help. Our, our school drug and alcohol policy and definitely resources for HIV and AIDS prevention and treatment. And in the middle here, you will see that they, they touch on many, many topics like stress, eating disorders, a mood disorder, you know, grief or loss and things we've talked about already, alcohol and drug use, smoking cessation. If you're looking to quit smoking, if you feel that's an issue for you, conflict resolution, which Dr. Mahone Lewis has talked about several times and our LGBTQ plus community, which we've talked about. Learning that difficulties and Maricelli brought up transitioning earlier and a common issue now is cyberbullying. So this yeah. SEAP can help you with many of these uh, issues that you may be going through. And I'll click on the contact information one more time here so you can see uh, there are several staff members available and their email and phone numbers and the office hours are Monday through Thursday, 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And then you can make an appointment in the evening from six to eight and also Friday morning, 7 to 7.30 to 11.30 a.m. The building number has changed. It is now, I believe, 264 is the building number, but that's the building. It's a little teeny tiny house between the planetarium and uh, the uh, uh, early Eagle. college high school building. So that's that little tiny house. It was uh, designed as a uh, an environmentally conscious house, so way back in the day. So anyway, that's where they're located, and there's their contact information. So uh, again, that could be quite helpful to some of you who are I'm not sure where to turn. So, okay. All right. And I will stop sharing now and bring us back. So, all right. Well, I just want to say thank you very much to Dr. Mahone Lewis. This has been a really great and informative um, experience for all of us. I hope that anybody that might even think they might need your services in the future will take advantage of them uh, and go introduce yourself at least and, and meet them. Uh, they are very professional and uh, they they really show you that they care. So please take advantage of that. Uh, so I want to say thank you very much for your time, Dr. Mahone. Thanks and, for the invitation. Thank you. And I, uh, Bruce, I don't know if you have some upcoming events that you might want to highlight. Yeah, before we get to that, let me just say that this presentation, this podcast will be available on YouTube later. So if there's the contact information that I just shared or some other tidbits of advice that Dr. Mahone Lewis has shared or anything like that that you want to refer back to or look up later, you can pull it up on YouTube later on. So this will be an extra resource for you. Now, as far as uh, events coming up tomorrow, if you are having issues with Blackboard, learning how to use Blackboard, the tools of Blackboard, uh, kind of figuring out how your faculty, your instructor uses Blackboard. Join us tomorrow at 2 p.m. for Dr. Angela Reese, who will go over the ins and outs of Blackboard on CTC Live. You can watch it here on Facebook, or you can pull it up on uh, on the on a WebEx, and you go to the news and events calendar there, and it's the link is there, but we'll be here on Facebook, so that's the easiest way to, to find us. And let's see what else we got. Labor Day, Monday, the 6th is a holiday for students, so we will be off that day. So, yay, no class on Monday, and we'll be back on Tuesday, the 7th. And let me just quickly look at uh, the calendar and see if there's anything I might have missed because I'm, I'm. I think on honest. Thursday we have uh, something that has to do with. It includes tutor. Uh, it's going to be a, a virtual session that includes tutoring. Um, That's where I'm going next. <laughs> Yeah, that's on uh, September 2nd. That's another uh, session of CTC Live, and that's going to be hosted by Student Success. They're going to talk about textbook lending, tutoring, child care assistance, if you qualify, and that'll be at 10 a.m. on uh, on Facebook. And so that's CTC Live then. 
And then yep. later on in the month, we'll have some Hispanic Heritage Month activities through the library, and those will all be virtual. So you can pull those up on the library Facebook page or this Facebook page, and uh, we'll keep you posted. And we've got, if you're a military veteran, we've got a CTC Live geared just to you on September 9th at 10 o'clock in the morning. Patrice Kennerson, who's the Director of Veteran Services here on campus, she will talk about uh, applying for military education benefits, and making sure that you're getting the most out of those benefits. And then if you're has, having questions or issues about financial aid and wondering about money, then September 14th, we have a CTC Live at 10 a.m. as well here on Facebook, where the financial aid representative, Lucette, will talk about how to uh, um, deal with the deadlines coming up with financial aid. Make sure you don't miss those deadlines and make sure that you're applying on time and then when the money will be distributed and all that through the business office and those kind of things. So, so we do have several events coming up uh, very soon. And I will put yep. the uh, link here in the uh, chat. So if anybody wants to uh, pull up one of those events, feel free to do so. There we go. And that lists all the upcoming events. So. All right. Well, thank you very much, Bruce. Um, this has been really kind of an awesome experience. And we really appreciate uh, both of your assistance in all of this. I know I do. Um, it's great working with, uh, with both of you. So I thank you for this and, uh, next month we will be having our next Eagle talk. Um, I want to say it's massage therapy. I can't remember the date. But I believe the, you are right. It'll be September 21st at 2 PM. The benefits of massage therapy. Yes, and so uh, it goes hand in hand with this. That's another stress relief, maintaining <laughs> sanity through uh, through massage. So, uh, yes. Dr. Yeah. Mahalo, I'm surprised you didn't recommend a massage. But even yeah. though you guys don't administer those down in your building, <laughs> that's certainly a referral. <laughs> yes. So, thank you very much to everybody, and we hope you have a great day. And we'll see you around, Eagles. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.